Good evening, Bulldog fans. Welcome to Lawrenceville High School, an old NEC matchup as the Bulldogs are here to take on the Lawrenceville Indians in a non-conference matchup. Cole Carter alongside Travis Black, J.C. Tinsley at the WRUL studio. Haley Winkleman with us for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. The pregame show is brought to you by Rice Motors. Take ricemotors.com for a test drive now and give Rice a try before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Bulldogs enter tonight's game with a 22-6 record. Lawrenceville 24-3. They're in the top 15 in the Illinois 2A rankings. Been a top 10 team pretty much all season long. Uh, Travis, we saw this team play in Carmi last season and pretty much brought everybody back. Didn't have much of a senior class last year. It's a pretty talented Lawrenceville squad. Yeah, they, they gave Carmi fits last year and without losing a really too much too many players from last year's team it's basically the same team coming back it's gonna it's gonna be a definite test I mean this team is 24 and 3 you know been top 15 top 10 and 2 8 the entire season so it's gonna be a test no doubt about it we heard Kevin Wolf talk uh, we asked him about this team back on Saturday and he said it's one of if not the best team they've seen all season obviously Carmi with their six losses one of those to a really good Benton team and I think you can kind of pick compare this team to Benton. They're not as physical as I think Benton is, but they're going to get out. Uh, they're going to shoot the ball a lot. They're going to run up and down. And one of the biggest things, Travis, is, is Carmine's got to play their brand of basketball. Lawrenceville's going to want to get up and down, get your face, and force you to play fast. But Carmine, they can't fall into that trap. Yeah, Carmine's going to have to play their brand of basketball. You know, look to push it when they can, but slow it down in transition. Work, run their offense. This Lawrenceville team, very talented on offense. Defensive-wise is where they make their, you know, their, their, their bread, right? They're going to get stops. They're going to pressure you. You're going to force you to turn the basketball over so they can get out and run, so they can push the ball in transit, get a couple of run-out layups, maybe a couple of transition threes. So Carmine's going to have to take care of the basketball and slow it down and play their brand. You know, one thing that Carmine has done pretty well all season long is play good defense, especially against these good teams. Uh, and on top of that, Travis, you, you want to play good defense. You want to limit their open shots. But the biggest bugaboo for Carmine the last couple of weeks has been offensive rebounds. This is one of those teams that you cannot let them get second chances because long rebounds lead to open threes that lead to runs. Yeah, Carmine's done a good job at getting stops. But finishing that possession, finishing the possession is a big key. So you have to box out. You have to get the defensive rebound. You play good enough defense to make a miss a shot. Well, if they get the offensive rebound, did that possession truly matter, right? So Carmine's going to have to do a better job checking off on the boards, getting the rebound, getting the stops they need, finishing the possessions, finishing the plays, and then going the other end and getting their offense running. I think one of the biggest things for Carmine as well is you got to get off to a good start. You really look at all six of Carmine, Carmine's losses, and about half of those have been in games where they just didn't get the shots going early, and they were forced to make a comeback late and couldn't make that comeback. Think about the Mount Carmel game, the Benton game, the two losses that really kind of left a bad taste in their mouth. Carmine can't get down to this game 15 points early or else it's going to be over. They've got to make that first punch. It's always a tough place to play. We have never played well in this gym since we started coming back here, uh, since the games were added back to the schedule. But Carmine's got to get up to a hot start. Yeah, they do. They they get sometimes caught sleepwalking. Sometimes they got the engine running, but they're stuck in neutral. Carmine's going to have to get going early on. This Lawrenceville team is not one to play around with because they're going to be coming out the gates hot. So Carmine's going to have to match that energy. Of course, it's on their senior night as well. And, you know, Travis, I, I don't know when the last time we've won in this gym. I think every time we've played in this gym, we've honestly played our worst game of the season. I know back to your senior year, they had won, I think, four games at that point. We come up here and lost a couple years after that. Come up here and lost. Uh, our sophomore year, we had a really good ball club. Tucker Gray and those guys come up here and got smacked by a really good Lawrenceville team. It's a tough place to play. Why do you think that is, Travis? It's, I mean, it's a long road trip. I don't know. The floor, it just... It's just something about the floor, man. I don't know what it is, but it just feels bigger, feels longer, and especially when Lawrenceville wants to put on that three-quarter court, full-court press if they want. It really just feels like you're just isolated on an island you know, on you know getting the ball up the court against there. Yeah, the Bulldogs 22-6 and six on this season. This is their final week of the regular season. They'll play here tonight. Then they have a, uh, the conference finale in Fairfield on Friday. We're going to keep our eye on the matchup going on in Flora tonight as Fairfield is taking on the Wolves in Flora. Again, Fairfield has not lost in conference play yet. Carmine having their one loss being to Fairfield. So Fairfield was to fall tonight to a Flora team that is playing better basketball of late. That would set up a winner-take-all on the conference championship 
side on Friday. If Fairfield wins tonight, a Carmine win would set up a two-way tie. Would you still get the trophy? Still get a conference championship, but of course it would be a lot cooler to have that game be a winner take all. Yeah, I think a lot of Carmine fans for the first time in ever probably are going to be rooting for Florida tonight. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny, Travis. I, I love coming here and I love going to these schools that really show some of the tradition and some of the history behind their basketball teams. I mean, this Lawrenceville team probably has one of the more richest history, if not the richest history, as far as Southern Illinois basketball, the four state titles in 72, 74, 82, and 83. A couple of fantastic players. We've been doing some research while killing some time during the JV game earlier tonight. Talked about it on the way up here. And I think it's really cool when you're able to see, you know, what, what some of these teams were able to do back in the 70s and 80s when it was only a two-class system. Yeah, and that means everybody had to play everybody. Yeah. I mean, it it is... It is crazy to me that there are so many good teams. I mean, if you go, obviously, here, four state titles, Pinckneyville and their rich history, just going to these different gyms, seeing those state title teams uh, years plastered to the floor, it just gives you appreciation, you know, checking out these old team pictures they got up hanging around here. So it gives you a, a fair bit of appreciation for some of the rich basketball history that some of these teams have. Speaking of postseason, regionals begin next Monday. The Bulldogs will host El Dorado in the – uh, there'll be 6 12 play in game. Carmine be in the sixth seed in their subsectional. If the Bulldogs win that game on Monday, they will move on to Wednesday's semifinal, which will be against the Vianna Eagles in Massac County. Bulldogs got a pretty good draw in the regional. They're staying away from Benton, but if they want to win a regional crown, they're going to have to beat two really good ball clubs in Vianna and Massac County. And Travis, really a good test tonight to get yourself ready for two really good teams you could see next week. Yeah, this is a litmus test game right here. It doesn't really matter. It matters for win-loss. doesn't matter for conference. has no bearing since uh, the seeding has already came out for subsectional and regional pairings. So this is just a good old-fashioned basketball game with really nothing on the line. So you got nothing to lose but everything to gain, maybe some respect for some of these other teams and maybe some fear. Carmine is still looking for that kind of signature win over the last couple of years. A couple of really good teams last year, a 26-win ball club. 22 wins this season, but still looking for that one signature win against a really good ball club, and that could be tonight. If Carmike gets off to a hot start and doesn't play from behind, doesn't let Lawrenceville control this ball game, Bulldogs got to play their brand of basketball and try to win on their terms, if you want to say. All right, flag has been lowered uh, near midcourt. We are way up high here on the home side. Lawrenceville, a great crowd here on their senior night. Not many Bulldog fans made the long road trip, so we're expecting a lot of you to watch over on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. We'll step aside as the national anthem is getting set to be played. We come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip between Carmine White County and Lawrenceville here at 97.3 WRUL. Back in three minutes. Your partner in auto repair. That's Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. You get service, expertise, and I promise you'll drive away satisfied. Complete engine and body repair, 24-hour-a-day wrecker and towing service, tires from sales and service, and repair including muffler service, brakes, shocks, suspension, and more. When quality counts, count on Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. Your partner in auto repair. Call 382-7165 today. Citizens National Bank of Albion has always been in the business of making dreams come true. Are you like many in the community that have dreamed of owning your own business? Bring your ideas in and speak to one of our commercial loan professionals in Albion, Alney, Crossville, and Bridgeport. Our competitive rates and solid decision making will make it the best decision you ever made. Let us help you get started and we'll watch your business grow. Citizens National Bank of Albion, no better banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I'm Nancy J. Winter CPA. We believe in family values, even in the world of finance, because every financial decision impacts your family. For all the milestones in your life, our team is here to maximize your savings, minimize your taxes, and help you plan for a prosperous future. Visit Nancy J. Winter CPA in Carmi for tax planning, saving for college, retirement planning, and the expertise to help get you where you want to be. Learn more at nancyjwinnercpa.com or call 382-2364. Nancy J. Winter CPA, where you are treated like family. 
great teamwork is no accident. David and the gang at Hale Body Shop salute the area athletes. Just as in sports, the team at Hale Body Shop work together to make sure you get your car back as quickly as possible. When it comes to collision repair, more and more people choose the team way out there on Possum Road. Hale Body Shop in Carmine. David and the gang are proud supporters of area athletes. Roark Trucking and Roark Transport in Carmine. Driving the distance, delivering the difference. Commercial or residential. In Hydra's propane and fuel. Rock, dirt, and lime. Parking lots, driveways, and washouts. Farmers depend on Roark Trucking and Roark Transport to deliver their lime when and where they need it. Remember Roark Trucking and Roark Transport for your next job or your next haul. Fast and dependable. Call Roark Transport and Roark Trucking. 618-265-3665. Back here in Lawrenceville getting set for the opening tip between the Bulldogs and the Indians. Cole Carter, Travis Black with you. Appreciate all of you listening in on 97.3 WRUL and watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. Big test for the Bulldogs here tonight as they get ready for regionals, which will begin next Monday. Starting five for Carmichael White County. Number two, Gavin Holloman, a six-foot junior. Number five, Mitchell Edwards, a 6'6 junior. Number 14, Landon Driscoll, a 6'3 senior. Number 20, Kate Stockton, a six-foot junior. And number 21, Trey Dixon, a six-foot senior. At Holloman, Edwards, Driscoll, Stockton, and Dixon for the 22 and six Carmichael White County Bulldogs. Curious to know when the last time Carmichael has won a game in this gym. I bet, they, honestly, I bet they haven't won a game in this gym because it's a, the school was built about 10 years ago. Yep. Probably since the NEC days. Yep, I would say. As they will make some noise as they introduce the starters for the Lawrenceville Indians. They're going to go. we got stuff falling down everywhere with the feet being stomped on the floor near us. Number zero, Parker Hardeman. He is a 5'8 junior. Also, number four, Xander Cessna. He's a 5'10 sophomore. Along with, I've already lost track. You see the number, Travis? 24. No, 24, he's in there. That's Maddox Pargin. He's a 6'3 junior. Number three, Landon Sanders, a 6'3 senior. And number 23, Bryant Jenkins. So for Lawrenceville, that is Hardeman, Cessna, Jenkins, Pargin, and Sanders. Lawrenceville, 24 and three on the season. As Travis mentioned earlier, they've been in the top 10 of the Illinois AP rankings all season long. This week, they were voted just outside the top 10. Just three losses on the season. Well, this can go one of two ways for the Bulldogs, Travis. You can come up tonight, play a competitive ball game, maybe pull off an upset win. Or if you don't show up, it's going to get ugly in a hurry. Yeah, let's hope for the former, not the latter. It'll be Edwards jumping up at midcourt against Jenkins. And Jenkins wins the tip. Lawrenceville's got the basketball as we are underway. Indians in their home whites going left to right here in the first half. Bulldogs in their road maroons going right to left. With the basketball, here is Pargin. Driving is Sanders. Picks it up, backdoor cut, and the layup up and good for Cessna. Simple little backdoor offense right there. So we're seeing Lawrenceville go with the full court pressure right away. Carmi has had their fair share of issues against pressuring teams this season. As they get into the front court here with Mitchell Edwards here on the near top. 2-0 Lawrenceville. We've played 35 seconds. Holloman on the far side. Puts it off to Edwards at the midcourt logo. Edwards goes near side, Cade Stockton over on the far top of Holloman. Down the far corner, Driscoll back to Holloman. They get it to Edwards, he'll fire a deep three in front of the Lawrenceville bench and he knocks it down. First bank three for Mitchell Edwards, a long one. And a good start right there. 3-2 Bulldogs, we've played one minute and Lawrenceville tries to answer with a missed three point shot from Pargin. You're gonna see a lot of quick threes from the Indians tonight. Driscoll gets inside, near top to Edwards, and the post to go to Dixon. Back out to Driscoll, near side Edwards. 
Lawrenceville looking like a 3-2 zone out the gate. Holloman right corner three, rims out. And the rebound grabbed by Jenkins into the front court. Hardeman near top, thought about the three. They go on the far side to Sanders. Sanders dribbling to his right. Switched on to by Holloman. Loose ball stolen by Edwards. Edwards into the front court. Picks up his dribble. Down low to Stockton. Layup good. Great pass there by Mitchell. Seeing the open man. Nice transition offense. The Bulldogs lead 5-2 with 6.15 to play here in the first quarter. Pargin here near top. Off to Jenkins on the far top to go to Sanders. Sanders dribbles, picks it up now, bounce pass to Jenkins. Going to the basket, finger roll layup good for Bryant Jenkins. 5-4, Carmi. Just over two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Holloman in the middle to go to the Driscoll. Now on the far side to Dixon against this pressure. And Carmi breaks it with these. And they'll set up the offense. Looks like Lawrenceville has gone back into a man. Oh, they're still, it's like a 2-1-2. That pass over on the right side, tipped away out of bounds. It will stay with Carmine. So far, like what you've seen from the Bulldog offense. Yep. Easy. They're having a nice, easy time breaking this press, working the ball around and not forcing anything. Driscoll over on the far top, picks up his dribble, goes near side to Edwards. He'll fire a three. It's off the near side of the rim, and the rebound grabbed by Cessna as he brings it into the front court. Here's Sanders. He'll pull up for three. It's off the mark. And Holloman grabs the rebound. They're not going to stay cold forever. Nope. Carmine's going to get some points while they can. Bulldogs lead 5-4, 5-12 to play in the first quarter. Edwards, top of the circle, it goes to Driscoll. He tries to get inside, lost it, stolen by Jenkins. Jenkins two on one up against Edwards. His shot blocked by Edwards, and Holloman the rebound. Holloman got bumped, no whistle, gets it up ahead to Stockton. Then his pass tipped and stolen by Jenkins, who falls down and draws a foul. That right there is what Lawrenceville wants you to do. They yeah. want you to kind of get ahead of yourself and throw it away. A great defensive play there by Edwards, blocking the shot. And then once he got the defensive rebound, they were already pressing and trapping before Gavin even knew what he was doing. First free throw by Jenkins is up and good. Makes it 5-5. Five to five. Second free throw on the way. He goes 2 of 2. Got a nice form is Bryant Jenkins. And so the Bulldogs will inbound. 6-5 Lawrenceville. 4.50 left to play here in the first quarter. Dixon across the timeline. Picks it up. Leaves it off for Driscoll. He comes near side to Edwards. Mitchell wants to go baseline. Cut off by Pargin. Near side in the hands of Holloman. Kicks it back out to Edwards. Carmine just trying to find some seams against this zone to try to get some shooters open. Cross-court pass goes to Holloman. Now it's Edwards at the top of the key. Edwards pulls up for three. Off the back iron, rebound into the hands of Pargin. Indians bring it the other way. Carmine's just not looking good in the half-court offense. Hardeman here near side, getting around a screen from Bryant. Bryant Jenkins, that is. He hands it off now to Pargin. Pargin, step back three over Holloman. Ooh, good shot. Great defense there by Gavin, just better offense. Maddox Parge in the step back three. Little 5-0 run here for Lawrenceville. Actually a 6-0 run for Lawrenceville and a turnover. They throw it up ahead to Hardeman. Hardeman to the basket. His layup, good. A 9-0 Lawrenceville run. It was 5-2 Carmine. Edwards into the front court. Tries to get around Jenkins. Now it's off to Driscoll. Bulldogs need a response here. Mentioned they can't fall down big early. Driscoll gets it off to Edwards. Now in the near corner goes to Holloman. Back up top to Edwards over on the far side to Dixon. Now in the far corner goes to Driscoll. Driscoll bounce pass to Edwards. Back to Driscoll. They go near side here to Holloman. Cross court pass. Edwards has it. Now it's off to Driscoll. In and dribbles inside. Pulls it back out. Far three on the right top, along the way for Edwards, up and good. First bank three for Mitchell. He's got six Bulldogs back within three at 11 to eight. Hardeman, left side, Jenkins. Hands it off to Sanders in the basket. Nobody there, layup good. That's way too easy. 13 to eight, Lawrenceville. 
2.37 to play in the first quarter. Bulldogs get it to the front court with Dixon. Now they go near side to Driscoll. Carmine is not really trying to get the ball in the paint in this first quarter thus far. Corner pass goes to Holloman. Gavin dribbles left, hands it off to Mitchell, right back to Holloman. Picks it up, goes cross court to Driscoll. Driscoll, jab, dribbles to the right side, lobs it over on the right top to Edwards. Edwards back to Driscoll. Driscoll steps through and he draws a foul on the floor. I'm just gonna have to do a better job at working the ball in, inside. You know, they're just kind of passing the ball around the three point arc. 13 to eight Lawrenceville, two minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Edwards over on the far side. Now on the far corner goes to Driscoll. Driscoll lobs it near top to Holloman. Now it's Edwards at the top of the key. Right side Driscoll, catch and shoot. Three, it's good for Landon Driscoll. First basket for Lando and the Bulldogs are back within two at 13 to 11. Parjan near side, tries to go baseline against Holloman, leaves it in the far corner. Catch and shoot three, and they answer. That's Cessna. 16 to 11, Lawrenceville. 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Dicks into the front court, leaves it off for Holloman. Zips it down low to Stockton. He catches it and goes right back out to Gavin. Edwards picks it up, goes right side. Holloman, he drives in, pull up mid-range jumper, blocked by Jenkins, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Jenkins. You're right, Travis. Carmite, they just have really not, besides that pass there to Stockton, have not looked to get the ball inside. And if they look more to that dead spot where Stockton is, he should be open. Every time they flash in the middle, they're leaving that bottom open. Catch and shoot three for Holloman, way off the mark, almost banked in. Lawrenceville brings it the other way, and Pargin trips, and they're going to call a foul against Carmine. So Trey Dixon, his second. So Merrick Milhorn will get some early action. as Dixon will take a seat. 16 to 11. Lawrenceville with the lead in the ball. Pargin here in the near corner, wanted to drive, and it's out of bounds, lost his handle. It's just kind of the game you got to play with these guys. You're not going to, it's not going to be a first to 40. It's not the old NEC. This no. is, this is the, the style of ball Lawrenceville plays, and and defensively, Carmine's had their moments, but they just got to be able to answer offensively. Yep. Carmine's going to have to do a better job, though, at you know on those little dribble drives that Lawrenceville's had a lot of success at getting to the basket. But you're right, this is not going to be a first to 40. This is going to be a first to 60. Final 40 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Driscoll here on the near top, swings it over to Holloman. Now in the far corner, it goes to Milhorn. Holloman. Try to go inside that pass shift. You can see how that zone defense, they just close in so quickly when you try to go inside. I think Carmine needs to try to get Edwards there in the post to try to mix it up. You know, with, with Stockton yeah. only being six foot, it's going to be hard to get the ball to him. Yeah, just get a little different look. Lawrenceville will hold for one shot with 10 seconds left. Sanders dribbles to the right side. Met there by Edwards. Gets it off in the near corner. Jenkins catch and shoot three off the back guy and rebound Millhorn and the first quarter comes to an end. Bulldogs hanging around. Just kind of make some shots. Lawrenceville leads by five after one quarter of play. 16 to 11. We'll step aside for a one minute break here on 97.3 WRUL. In 1925, when Farrell Hospital opened, they knew that families in El Dorado and the surrounding communities needed a hospital they could depend on, close to home. Over the years, Farrell grew to meet the needs of patients. Today, Farrell Hospital has grown to offer advanced emergency care, orthopedics, cancer, surgery, imaging, lab, and more, always keeping more care right here close to home. Farrell Hospital, you can depend on us. 
You can buy more of what you want when you save on what you need. Save on meal ingredients by shopping Little Giant Grocery Outlet in Carmi. Little Giant's team of buyers are constantly scanning wholesalers, looking for pantry favorites and meal ingredients at astonishing savings just so you can shop confidently, knowing that you can come in anytime and find great deals from fresh cuts of meat and grocery items to deli, fresh produce and frozen goods. See just how much more your dollar buys at Little Giant Grocery, Carmi, Illinois. Back here in Lawrenceville as we get set for the second quarter of play. Cole Carter, Travis Black with you. J.C. Tinsley back at the WRUL studio. Haley Winkleman to my left running the stream and the camera tonight. As the Bulldogs have the basketball, Lawrenceville leading 16-11. to Driscoll over on the far side. It goes to Holloman. Gavin dribbles off in the hands of Edwards. Now it's Driscoll on the volleyball line corner. Puts on the floor. They go near side to Millhorn. Driscoll at the top of the key over on the right side. Back to Holloman. Back to Driscoll. Pulls up for three. Won't go. Rebound tipped and grabbed there by Sanders. Again, no post touches there for Carmine. Nope, just passing it back and forth on the perimeter. Pargin quick three won't go. And Cade Stockton able to get the rebound. And it's tipped over to Edwards. Lava near side to Holloman. Bulldogs trail by 5, 16 to 11. Driscoll here in the near corner. They want to go inside. That pass deflected. They swing it around right side to Edwards. Off to Holloman near midcourt. Hardeman right there on him. Holloman dribbles. Far corner Millhorn. Down low to Stockton. Stockton dumps it off to Driscoll. Driscoll goes in the paint layup. Good for Landon Driscoll. That's what we're looking for right there. Got it to the dead spot and good things happen. Bulldogs back within three. 16 to 13. We play a little over a minute here in the second quarter, and a nice move by Bryant Jenkins going around Edwards and hitting the reverse layup. He's a good player, Jenkins is. Yep, that was a great left-handed finish for a right-handed player. Edwards here on the near side, off to Holloman at the top of the key. Holloman, bounce pass right side, goes to Millhorn. Millhorn back to Holloman, near side it's Driscoll. Driscoll tries to drive baseline, goes into the contact, and he's fouled by Bryant. Bryant Jenkins, that is, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. So two free throws here for Lane and Driscoll. They're brought to you by Expressway Ford. Don't get fouled by a bad buying experience. Count on Expressway Ford Mercury, and you'll always be in the bonus. First free throw for Driscoll up and good. He'll have one more that makes it 18 to 14. Second free throw for Driscoll. Missed that one, rebound by Jenkins. Lawrenceville to the front court in a hurry. They go to Sanders, baseline drive, layup good. And Kevin Wolf wants to call a timeout. With 6.20 left to play in the second quarter, 2014 Lawrenceville back in 30 seconds. What you need, when you need it. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi has what you need. From outpatient therapy serving pediatrics to geriatrics, when you need it. Flexible hours for your convenience, state-of-the-art equipment, private treatment rooms, and personalized programs tailored to fit you and delivered by a therapy team committed to compassionate care. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi. Learn more by calling 382-2927 today or search Wabash Christian Therapy on Facebook. Wabash Christian Therapy in Carmi. Better every day. Six twenty left to play here in the second quarter. Lawrenceville leading Carmichael White County twenty to fourteen. Bulldogs bring it into the front court against this pressure from Lawrenceville. They do so with ease. Edwards here on the near top, zips it down in the corner. This is Millhorn trying to get position. Left the shot short. Did Millhorn and the rebound grabbed by Jenkins. Lawrenceville into the front court quickly. Sanders pulls up for three. Off the mark, out of bounds, last touched by Holloman. And they just, you, you don't see a lot of teams that just get from one end of the floor to the other so quickly. The only team I can tell you that runs the floor as well as this Lawrenceville team does is Viana. Yeah. And bounce pass knocked away by Driscoll. It's going to stay on this end. Well, Carmi has had their chances in this first quarter. They've gotten some stops defensively, and you, know, you think Lawrenceville scored 20 points, but they've missed a handful of threes. Carmi hasn't allowed, I don't think, an offensive rebound yet. Nope. 
They've done what they need to do defensively for the most part. Just got to find a way to answer offensively. Hardeman here near side in the post. They go to Jenkins. Jenkins trying to work against Edwards. Goes in the far corner. Open for three. Cessna another. Can't leave him alone. Second corner three. Cessna's made. All of a sudden, Lawrenceville up by nine. 23-14. Carmike can't let this get away early. Edwards off the Driscoll between the keys. Puts it on the floor. Now comes near side back to Edwards. That pass knocked away, and it took a while to go out of bounds. We'll stay on this in with the Bulldogs. 521 left to play. If it sounds like thunder up here, it's not thunder. It's about 20 little kids running around our broadcast table up here. There's a steal and a layup by Cessna at the other end. Kevin Wolf wants to call a timeout. And Lawrenceville has grown their lead to 11. And it's brought to you by Rush Appliance. We'll take one as well back in 30 seconds. Big City Services in a small town. That's Butch and Associates CPAs. Providing superior client service to folks here at home and across the U.S. Taxes and bookkeeping, accounting and audit services, plus full service consulting. Butch and Associates CPAs, where expertise meets excellence. At Butch and Associates, it's your journey backed by our commitment. Visit butch.com to learn more and contact us today. Five sixteen left to play here in the second quarter as the Bulldogs having some struggles. They trail Lawrenceville 25 to 14. Really having a hard time against this zone defense, Travis. Yep. And Carmine's had success when they can get the ball to the dead spot. The problem is it's been few and far between. Edwards over on the right side. They get it to Holloman. Holloman back to Edwards between the circles. Now it's Holloman. That pass stolen away. That's Cessna again. Lays it up again. This is how Lawrenceville is 24-3. They, this is their style of basketball. Their lead is 13 all of a sudden, 27-14. Edwards. Dribbles once, picks it up, now goes on the far side to Millhorn. Dead spot, Driscoll goes into the contact and he's able to draw the foul. And that right there, Travis, both times they've gone to Driscoll in the post, he's been able to get to the basket. Yep, and they've had a couple times with Millhorn down there in Stockton. If they can get the ball to the dead spot, that's the one weakness in this, this Lawrenceville zone. They're so perimeter focused and mill the court focused that they flash somebody in the middle and throw the ball in the dead spot. They're working one-on-one. -on -one. First expressway forward free throw is good for Landon Driscoll, he's got six points. Second free throw for Driscoll on the way. He goes two for two. Landon's got seven. Team high. Bulldogs back with an 11, 27 to 16. Jenkins, top of the key, fakes the handoff, now goes near side. In the near corner, it's off to Sanders. Sanders, bounce pass down low. Jenkins, reverse layup, good. Bryant Jenkins with eight. He's gone around us three different times like we're standing still. Holloman between the circles. Dribbles to the left side, gets it off to Edwards. Edwards dribbles right, off to Holloman. Gavin goes in the corner to Milhorn. Milhorn picks up his dribble, now goes cross court off to Driscoll. Driscoll pull up jumper on the way, won't go. <coughs> Rebounded by Sanders. Lawrenceville looking to push the floor again. They lead by 13, 29 to 16. Sanders pulls up for three, misses. And the long rebound grabbed by Landon Driscoll. <coughs> Bulldogs have it. They go over to Holloman on the right side. His three-point shot won't go. Gavin's still scoreless early on as the Indians bring it the other way. And there's going to be a foul on Holloman on the drive by Pargin. Three twenty-seven left to play here in the second quarter. Sesta inbounds near side to Sanders, cutting Jenkins reverse layup once again, up and good for Bryant Jenkins, who's got ten. Thirty-one sixteen, a fifteen-point Lawrenceville lead. Holloman goes on the near side to Driscoll. Driscoll back off to Edwards, deep three on the way. Good for Mitchell Edwards. First bank three. He's got nine points here in the first half. 
And like I said, against this zone, I mean, yeah, you're going to hit some threes, but you just can't really rely on that. Yep. I mean, the best way to break a zone is shoot them out of it, but if you don't get enough inside touches, you're going to be taking threes longer and longer away. Jenkins out in the corner. Hardeman open for three. Lawrenceville can't miss right now. Parker Hardeman's got five, 34-19. Lawrenceville with the lead. Driscoll goes in the corner for Holloman. That one tipped away. It will stay with the Bulldogs. Two and a half left to play here in the half. Carmine trailed by just five at the end of the quarter. And that has uh, moved to 15. We just announced that somebody surpassed 1,500 points. I would assume it's Jenkins. Yeah. Yeah. As they recognize Jenkins there at midcourt with a little shiny laminated paper. piece of paper. <laughs> Remember about, I don't know, five or six years ago, Drew Brees broke the all-time passing record, and they gave him a nice, you know, stop the game presentation, gave him a, a, a laminated piece of paper. Yep. I just thought it was funny. All right, <laughs> here we go. So congrats to uh, Brian Jenkins there on that accomplishment. We could see early on that he's a 1,500-point scorer. That pass to the top in the hands of Holloman. Now on the near side, Driscoll for three. It won't go, and Hardeman grabs the rebound. Indians on the run. This is Cessna to the rim. Layup good. They just slice right through you. Yeah, they have not missed a two-point field goal. They are, well, they missed one in the first quarter, but they are, what was that, 11 of 12? Cessna's got 14 points. Loose ball. Lawrenceville dives on it. Carmi does it, and it's a loose ball. It's going to end up in the hands of Merrick Milhorn, who will lay it up and in. Bulldogs kind of break there. 36-19, 1.45 left to play here in the second quarter. Jenkins, the drive, shot good. Is this team better than Benton? They're playing right now. I, again, Benton's got 6-8, which you can't really replicate. Stolen by Hardeman, unselfish play to Sanders. Lawrenceville just making it look easy right now. They have scored 40 points here in the first half. 40-21. My this, goodness. This looks like a seventh grade basketball team versus a college team right now. Another steal. Jenkins, why not? Yep. We might get home early tonight, Travis. 14 points for Bryant Jenkins, and Lawrenceville has doubled up Carmine here in the second quarter. It's 42 21. This team is the real deal. Chickens missed the free throw, and Edwards fouled on the rebound. We talked before the game about the success <laughs> this school has had in the postseason, and with this squad, don't be surprised to see them playing well in the late February. Yep, they are the real deal. Edwards, near side it goes to Driscoll, back to Edwards, catch and shoot three, off the mark, rebounded by Pargen. Three on one the other way, Pargen, near corner, Sanders, catch and shoot three. Yep. This reminds me of 2016. Yeah. That Lawrenceville team. Millhorn in the far corner. Off to Edwards. Back in the far corner, Millhorn. Bounce pass goes to Stockton. No look pass near side. Holloman catch and shoot three. No good. And the rebound tip into the hands of Pargen. Up ahead to Sanders. Bounce pass. Jenkins lays it in for two. 47 to 21 with 10 seconds left to play here in the half. If I'm Carmine, it's all on the ball. Yeah, so they'll score again. Don't let them score. Three seconds, Edwards dribbling the wrong direction and fades, and that's how that disastrous second quarter comes to an end. This Lawrenceville team is the real deal. Indians lead 47-21 at the half. We'll step aside for a three-minute break. Jordan Funeral Group Halftime Show coming up next on 97.3 WRUL.
Welcome to Taylor Eye Care on Falcon Avenue in Carmi. Excellence in eye care. From thorough examinations utilizing advanced equipment and technology to premier optical products. Here at Taylor Eye Care, we treat every patient like family, going above and beyond the expected for a truly memorable eye care experience. Simply put, we are excellence in eye care. If you're looking to brighten and enhance your vision, don't hesitate to contact us today, 382-4683. Doing business in today's world can be complicated, time-consuming, and expensive. People's National Bank is here to help your business not only survive, but thrive. With modern-day products such as remote deposit capture, ACH payments, merchant card services, and commercial line of credit sweeps, we can get you paid faster, protect your risk, and make your money work hard for you. Hi, this is Melinda with People's National Bank. Give me a call today and get started. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics are growing to meet the needs of our communities. We're proud to continue to expand by offering acute, urgent care services by welcoming Dr. Brian Sloan to our McLeansboro Family Clinic location. With over 20 years of emergency medicine experience, Dr. Sloan provides acute, urgent care visits for those times when you can't wait to feel better. From colds and sore throats to care after sports-related injuries and more, Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics. Here for you now, like we've always been. To schedule an appointment, call 618-643. 2988. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years. Rush Appliance and Furniture stands the test of time. We have a large selection of in stock furniture and appliances for every room in your home, grills and smokers, and an unmatched dedication to superior service. This is Sean Rush inviting you to visit me in Fairfield or my dad, Terry, in Carmi, where we can help you furnish every room in your house with superb service after the sale. Whether you're a competitive athlete or want to enjoy a stroll around your neighborhood, orthopedic health is critical to your quality of life. The orthopedic and sports medicine team at Wabash General Hospital treats injuries and disorders of the bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and spine so you can return to moving through life with greater comfort and ease. To schedule an appointment, call 618-263-6400. Wabash General Hospital, people you know, helping people you love. Before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber. From cabinets and flooring, doors and paint, lumber and hardware, to shingles and siding. Knowledgeable and friendly staff that have your back on all those home projects. And even deliver to your door. So before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber. For the woods, the goods, and the know-how. Visit Carmi Lumber, North 3rd Street in Carmi and CarmiLumber.net. Halftime here in Lawrenceville as the Bulldogs trail Lawrenceville 47 to 21. Cole Carter alongside Travis Black, J.C. Tinsley back at the WRUL studio. And Haley Wakeman with us for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. And this is Bulldog basketball on 97.3 WRUL, Carmine, Illinois, and also online worldwide at WRUL.com. The halftime show is brought to you by the Jordan Funeral Group. Remembering lives well lived and honoring the Shisha to Bulldog Sports. Visit Jordan at FemaleGroup.com. All I can say is, wow, there in that first half, Travis. I mean, you know, Carmi, I thought in the first quarter, did a lot of things right. Only trailed by five after one. But Lawrence Hill in that second quarter, if you had any doubt as to why this team is a top 15 team in the state, they showed it right there. Yeah, they were forcing Carmi to turn the ball over. I mean, they, Carmi had. They had nine in that first half, five in that second quarter, and they all seem to be right in succession, get the ball over half court. and I mean, Lawrenceville's a great team. They're, they are one of the best I've seen this year. I mean, they are definitely deserving of a top 15 in 2A. I'm surprised they're not higher than, you know, in that 15 area, 15 between 10 and 15. They're not cracking the top 10, but defensively they are great, and offensively they didn't miss a shot. It, it looked like a layup line for them out there. Individual stat line there in the first half for Lawrenceville. Bryant Jenkins had uh, 16 points, 14 from Xander Cessna, 9 from Landon Sanders, 5 from Parker Hardeman, and 3 from Maddox Pargin. For the Bulldogs, 9 points for Mitchell Edwards, 7 for Landon Driscoll, and 2 for Merrick Milhorn. Travis, you got team stats? 
Kramer shot three of six from two-point field goal range and four of 14 from three-point field goal range and three of four from the free throw line. Lawrenceville shot an astounding 15 of 16 from two-point field goal range, five of 11 from three-point field goal range, and two of three from the charity stripe. Carmi had one offensive, seven defeats, defensive rebounds with nine turnovers. Lawrenceville had no offensive rebounds, 12 defensive rebounds, and only three turnovers. Well, and, and Travis, I made the point to you during the break that, you know, Carmi could do this, Carmi could do that offensively. It's hard to compete with 15 of 16 from two-point range and 5 of 11 from downtown. I mean, what do you do? You know, it's one of those things where, yes, Carmi has not played well. They've turned the ball over too many times, missed too many shots, haven't taken care of the ball and, and, and got the ball where it needs to go. But at the same time, they just scored 47 points in one half. You know, it's it, they, Lawrenceville's a great team. They're a great shooting team, as they've shown in this first half. But there's just some things you can clean up. Offensively, Carmi could have... Once they got the ball to the dead spot to land, and that's when they he got those couple baskets there early on when Lawrenceville had that initial run the first about two minutes of the second quarter. He got a couple baskets, got a couple, got sent to the free throw line a couple times, but then they kind of started going away from it, passing on the, around the perimeter, launching up long-range threes, and that's what this Lawrenceville team wants. They want you taking those deep threes because they're going to get that long rebound and they're gone. You, I mean, Cole, you said enough in the first, first half there. Three on one back. Carmi's got one guy to their three. They are wanting to push the pace so they can they can get an offensive or they get a defensive rebound and they're gone. And that's the most impressive thing about this Lawrenceville team. They're great defensively and they're a good defensive rebounding team. They don't give up offensive rebounds and normally that's the weakness of a zone. Is you don't you're not boxing out man to man so it's harder to team rebound. But this Lawrenceville team is so good at it that they can they have one guy rebounding while the other four are waiting up the court to cherry pick. And that's what they did that entire first first half against Carmi. They pushed the floor, they got the rebound, and they were gone. They were running the floor like it was five-man weave drills. And those are the things Carmi can clean up, get more guys going back, maybe crash the offensive glass a little harder, trying to keep them from getting those runouts. But, I mean, it was an impressive first half by this Lawrenceville team, and let's see how Carmi responds in the second half. In your halftime score, Lawrenceville leads 47-21. We'll step aside for a three-minute break and come back with the third quarter here on 97.3 WRUL. Hello, Bulldog fans. This is Kyle Hosick with Country Financial. It's been great coming back to my hometown of Carmi, supporting our Bulldogs as well as my current and future clients. Whether you're looking for auto or home insurance, insurance for your business, life insurance, or a retirement plan, I can help. I take pride in quality customer service and promise to listen to what's important to you while ensuring you have the right coverages. Stop by my office to see what sets us apart. Country Financial Representative, Kyle Hosick, 603 West Main in Carmi. Welcome to Pro Rehab Carmi, where our passion is getting you back to life faster. It is our privilege to walk with you every step of the way using evidence-based treatments specifically created just for you. Whether it's sports, general orthopedics, or pelvic floor rehab, you are in the right hands. Your results are worth fighting for, and our team fights for you. Call 384-7872 or visit Pro Rehab on Main in Carmi and get back to life faster. Hey, Bulldog fans. Step into a legacy of trust and quality at Rice Motor Company. Hi, I'm Matt Rice, and here at Rice's, we have proudly served Carmi and Southern Illinois for over 90 years. Every mile is a memory, so come join the Rice Motors family today and ensure you find the perfect car for your journey. Rice Motor Company, your hometown dealership, driving satisfaction since 1931. Go Bulldogs and give Rice a try before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, we proudly sell Skag and Spartan mowers. We fully understand the key to repeat and referral business is a strong parts and service department. This is also crucial to help keep your machine in top condition. Our multi-point winter service program is currently in full swing with one of the most competitive prices in the area. We have certified technicians on staff and we use brand specific products to keep that warranty fully intact. Pickup and delivery are available. Call 618-380-2133 or stop by 610 East Main today. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply in Carmi, Illinois. Getting ready for the third quarter here in Lawrenceville as the Indians lead Carmichael White County 47-21. This has been the Jordan Funeral Group Halftime Show as we get set for the third quarter. 
Carmichael trailed by just five after one. It was 16 to 11. I'm not good at math to tell you what the score was there in the second quarter. What, 31 to 10? Yep. Uh, one, 11. Well, no, we had 11. Yep. 31 to 10. Lawrenceville outscored Carmichael there in the second quarter. And they start the third quarter off the same way with Logan Sanders, Landon Sanders, excuse me, hitting the fadeaway jumper. They just can't miss. They shot 20 of 37 in the first half. Gavin Holloman gets inside, blocking foul, and will they count the basket? No, he waved it off, said it's going to be on the floor. Foul goes against Jenkins. And so Carmi will keep the basketball. Next dead ball, we'll take a look at the, okay, they're going to stop the ball. I think that was Sanders' 1,000 points. And we got another shiny laminated paper. Well, you've got a 1,500-point score and then a 1,000-point score. I'd say you're doing gonna, well. Going to win some ball games. Well, congratulations to Landon Sanders. I could tell with, with the way the bench reacted when he made that shot that it was some kind of milestone. So congrats to Sanders on that. Bulldogs inbound it. Corner three for Driscoll on the way. Off the side of the rim, no good. Jenkins falls down the rebound. Holloman gets it back. How about the hustle there by Jenkins to get up and block that shot? And then Pargin dives on the floor and commits a foul. Well, they got that on Landon. Jenkins fell down, lost the ball, jumped back up and blocked the shot and got the ball back. That's hustle. 49-21 Lawrenceville with 7-14 to play here in the third quarter. Hardeman over on the far side to Sanders. Sanders pulls up for a corner three. That one no good as Cade Stockton gets the rebound. And Driscoll throws it to Madison Smitty on the baseline. Yeah, I don't think Shaq would have caught that ball. Ball goes back to Lawrenceville. We've played one minute here in the third quarter, 49-21. Sanders into the front court. Picks up his dribble, bounce pass, knocked away by Driscoll into the hands of Hardeman. And on the near side, back to Sanders. Guarded by Dixon. Trey had to sit quite a bit there in that second quarter with some foul trouble. That's really when Lawrenceville made their run. Pull up three for Cessna, left wide open, no good. Edwards had the rebound momentarily, then it was knocked away, and Cade Stockton able to have it. Bulldogs trying to get their first points here in the third quarter. Driscoll picks up his dribble, and it's off to Edwards. Deep three-point shot on the way, won't go. And Holloman got the offensive rebound. Gavin goes up, got a shot blocked by Jenkins. And Lawrenceville brings it the other way. Hardeman off to Jenkins. Dumps it off down low. They go near corner to Sanders. And they'll reset the offense here. Sanders. Bounce pass down low. Stolen by Driscoll. Nice play there by Landon. And then the ball goes out of bounds. And I, I say last touch by Lawrenceville, but I thought Landon got fouled and, and Landon dribbled it out of bounds, but maybe a make up for it. 49-21 Lawrenceville, 5.49 left to play here in the third quarter. Driscoll over on the right top. Bounce pass goes to Dixon, tip back in the hands of Driscoll. Driscoll dribbles in, near corner three for Holloman on the way, won't go. The rebound tipped and controlled by Pargin. <clears throat> How many threes has Carmi shot here tonight, Travis? That would be number 17. Wow. 49-21, that pass down low, knocked away, and Sanders had it for a moment, but he was out of bounds, and the ball goes back over to Carmine. Trying to give you a score update on that game going on in Flora tonight. Mentioned Flora and Fairfield, a big matchup that will have a lot to decipher for this Friday's matchup when the Bulldogs travel to Fairfield. Edwards left top, now in the far corner, it goes to Holloman, back to Edwards. Edwards. Picks up his dribble, goes cross court over to Holloman. Holloman back to Edwards, tries to get inside, stumbles, and he's fouled. 
do have a score update from Flora. 1.36 left to play in the second quarter. It's Flora leading Fairfield 19-13. So rooting for Flora tonight. That'd be a good way to kind of help heal this wound a little bit. Rough game here in Lawrenceville. I'd take a floor win to kind of even things out. Edwards drives inside. Layup good. Nice play by Mitchell Edwards. Really the first time Carmi's been able to drive to the basket for the layup. Bulldogs get their first points here in the third quarter, 49-23. Really, Travis, here in the final, you know, 12 or so minutes of this ball game, there's a basket by Pargin. Final 12 or so minutes, you just want to find something positive to take away from this ball game. Yep. You're just trying to work on a couple things that you might see against another team that plays this type of zone or work on a new type of offense you want to run. Pargin converts a three-point play. It's 52-23. Driscoll dribbles to his left, lobs it in the far corner for Holloman. Down low to Dixon, and he's fouled by Jenkins. It's his second. 52-23, Lawrenceville. Inbounds pass goes to Edwards. Corner three on the way, no good. Rebounded by Pargett. Lawrenceville on the run. Up ahead to Hardeman. Back to Pargett, down low. Sanders steps through, layup good. Landon Sanders has 13 for the Indians, and their lead is up to 31. 54-23. Driscoll, bounce pass down low to Stockton. Back out to Driscoll for three. Short, rebounded by Jenkins. Indians on the run. They go near side to Pargin. He'll pull up for three. It won't go, and Sanders tipped it in, but it won't count. He leaped over the back there of Kate Stockton, so no basket. Got our first sub in the game for Lawrenceville. It has just been their starting five rolling from this point. They'll put in Jaden Goff. He's a 6'1 sophomore. 54-23 Indians. Three and a half left to play here in the third quarter. Holloman left top. Near side it goes to Edwards in the near corner off to Driscoll. Free throw line. Dixon driving. Shot blocked. Tipped into the hands of Hardeman. Lawrenceville the other way. Four on one. Jenkins in the basket. Layup good and one. Bryant Jenkins, 18 points. Which gets for a three-point play. 19 for Jenkins, 57-23. 3-10 left to play here in the third quarter. Driscoll will drive inside, goes to the rim, shot won't fall. Driscoll had the rebound for a second, and they call a jump ball with the arrow favoring the Bulldogs. So a second chance here for Carmine. Three oh two left to play here in the third quarter. Edwards has the basketball. Picks up his dribble. Goes near side to Dixon. Back to Edwards. Edwards dribbles left side, picks it up over on the far side to Holloman. Edwards back to Holloman, thought about it, back to Edwards. He'll dribble it near side, pull up jumper on the way, won't go. Stocked in there for the offensive rebound, his shot blocked out of bounds. And it will stay with the Bulldogs, 2.35 left to play here in the third, 57-23 Lawrenceville. Driscoll lobs it in to Edwards near the volleyball line. Edwards dribbles left. That one poked away out of bounds. Now we'll say it. It will be, you know, Lawrenceville not in the same sectional as Carmi, so you got to pretty much guarantee that Carmi probably won't see this team again. It wouldn't be to the super sectional as Driscoll gets inside and lays that one in. But it's going to be see Lawrenceville. It's going to be fun to see them play some of these big 2A schools come postseason time. Would not be shocked if they're playing in Carbondale here in a couple of months. Pargin over in the far corner. Now it's Sanders on the near top. They go near side with it is Hardeman. Hardeman tries the drives. Cut off by Stockton. 
Lobs it down low. Good job by Stockton, but Jenkins able to get it. Now they go in the corner. Sanders for three. They can't miss. 16 for Landon Sanders, and it's 60 25. 138 left to play here in the third quarter. Edwards near corner Driscoll, baseline drive, and missed the layup. Trying to get his own rebound, got it off to Cade Stockton, who then throws it out to Edwards, who fires a deep three and hits. First bank three for Mitchell Edwards. He's got 14 points. And it's 60-28 as Jenkins goes right to the rim and lays it in. Bryant Jenkins with 21 for Lawrenceville. And Driscoll's fouled near midcourt with 101 left to play here in the third quarter. Really, Travis, what's impressed me the most, I mean, Lawrenceville was a team that I recall last year when they played in Carmine, just shot the lights out from downtown. But it feels like most of the damage has been done inside, inside the, arc. the arc. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's an, it's, I've never seen a team shoot this well inside the arc. They're 20 of 21 right now. They've missed one shot, and that, wow. was, that was their third shot of the first quarter. Driscoll's first free throw is short. You know, Landon... Dealing with a sickness. Travis, you mentioned he came to school a little bit later today trying to fight through that. He's played hard tonight as he missed the second free throw. Lawrence fell the other way in a hurry. Jenkins drives in. Sanders, corner three, won't go. And Kate Stockton able to fight for the rebound, still loose on the floor. Good hustle from Stockton and Dixon. And Hardman leaves it in the near corner for Pargent. His three no good, Edwards the rebound. 40 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. 62-28. Dixon here near side. Gets it off to Driscoll. Edwards now. Pulls it back out. And we'll see if Carmine wants to hold for one shot here with 23 seconds. Edwards pull up jumper, short. Rebounded, tipped around, and Jenkins has it. Three on two the other way. Jenkins with a drive to the basket. Layup, good, and one. Why not? They make everything. <laughs> 64-28. And a free throw coming up here for Jenkins. Three-point play, good. 65-28, final five seconds here in the third quarter. Driscoll, I don't think, knows how much time is left. He does it. Time runs out. 65-28. to 28. Step aside for a one-minute break and be back with the fourth quarter on 97.3 WRUL. We are seriously overstocked at Expressway Ford. Choose from our huge selection of new and pre-owned Fords. Like this one owner 2020 Ford Escape SE all-wheel drive, only $17,990. Or this 2021 Ford Explorer XLT, only $25,990. Or loaded 2020 Ford Edge SEL all-wheel drive, reduced to $29,90. See our huge inventory at expresswayfordonline.com. Everything is priced to sell during our SOS sale. Expressway Ford, more Fords for less. You don't live to bank, you bank to live. And that's why so many of our customers rely on First Mid for much more than banking alone. Beyond everyday financial services, we're a valued partner and advisor with the help and resources for the things you need and whatever you aspire to achieve. So whether you're buying groceries or budgeting your dream kitchen, protecting your life's work, or laying the foundation for life after work, we're your bank for everything in the middle of anything. We're First Mid. First Mid Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Start the fourth quarter, and we'll take a look at the regional scoreboard built by Carmi Lumber, helping to assemble and shape a better community. That's Carmi Lumber on 3rd Street. Some other scores from around the area. Earlier tonight at halftime, it was Edwards County leading El Dorado 46-10. Carterville beat A.J. earlier tonight 61-28. Vianna leads Duquoin at half 42-24. 
Benton leading Hamilton County at halftime, 39 to 15, and Flora leading Fairfield, 20 to 18 at halftime up in Flora. We'll keep our eye on that game. Running clock here for the rest of the ball game as Lawrenceville leads it, 65-28. Step back three for Pargin, a rare miss. They're human as the long rebound gets tipped out to Mitchell Edwards. Lobs it up ahead to Holloman, and that was last touched by Holloman. Somehow, ball goes back over to Lawrenceville. Just the hustle. Yep. I mean, I mean, the extra effort plays. The entire length of the floor. This team just, they don't take plays off. They're everywhere. Pargin here near side. Top of the key. That one stolen by Driscoll, and Driscoll will lay it up and in. 11 points for Landon Driscoll. 65 to 30. Parson. Sanders cutting inside. Mid range jumper up and good. Sanders with 18 points here on his senior night as they recognized him and Jenkins before the ball game. And those two came to play. 24 for Jenkins and 18 for Sanders. Holloman left side three, no good. Gavin still scoreless in this ball game as the rebound goes out of bounds. Last touched by Carmichael White County. Well, Carmike can use this game in one of two ways. Option one, put it behind you, go up to Fairfield on Friday and try to win a conference championship and get something going in the right direction for regional time as Pardon's jumper, no good. Or option two, you just shut things down and get your next three games over with pretty much. There's a steal by Pardon. Lobs it up for Jenkins, his layup no good, rebounded by Edwards. Edwards to the basket, goes up and throws it down with the right hand. Nice drive there by Edwards, he's got 16. And ball goes out of bounds, last touched by Lawrenceville. 69 to 30, Lawrenceville with the lead. Five fifteen left to play in the ball game. Edwards hands it off to Driscoll. Driscoll goes left side to Holloman. Holloman dribbling in, leaves it near top for Edwards. Deep three on the way, and no good. And Stockton couldn't get the rebound. Loose ball. Driscoll dives on the floor to get it. Nice hustle by Driscoll, trying to get rid of it, and shoots it while on the ground and missed it. Indians the other way. Here's Sanders of the baseline drive and he'll lob it up top to Pargin. Bounce pass. Nobody near Cessna. That describes this ball game in one play. Four and a half left to go. Carmi set to empty their bench. Lawrenceville will soon do the same. Loose ball stolen away by Jenkins. Sanders, right wing three. No good. Rebounded by Cage Stockton. Final four minutes left to play in this ball game. Edwards dribbles left, hits it off to Holloman. He'll fire a deep three. It's no good. Rebounded by Cessna. Throws it up ahead to Jenkins, who missed the dunk, but he got his own rebound. And Missed the second attempt. Edwards at the other end, tries to get inside, leaves it off for Driscoll. Driscoll back up top to Edwards. Edwards goes into Pargin, and they're going to call a blocking foul. So Carmi will empty the bench. As Lawrence Hill will do the same, and nice round of applause. And the Lawrenceville faithful, and if you're Randy Bishop, not sure there's anything you could be upset about for this game. No, maybe they didn't make enough layups, I guess. <laughs> Hayden Sauls checks in, Beck Huff, Merrick Milhorn, Colton Marvin, and Dylan Weinerberger. 
In for the Bulldogs, Travis, I think you mentioned that Mason Haywood, he also dealing with a sickness. And they'll take out their two seniors, and what a night for those two seniors. Landon Sanders, 18 points, and Bryant Jenkins, 24 points. Sanders surpassed 1,000 tonight, and Jenkins surpassed 1,500. Marvin in the far corner, gets it off to Huff. Huff will drive inside. It's it back near side to Millhorn. Marvin left top, dribbles it between the circles. Huff on the far side, Wannaberger there for a screen. Sauls on the near side to Marvin. Marvin dribbles off to Wannaberger, left side to Millhorn. Jab at a drive by Merrick, his layup up and good. Nice play by Merrick Millhorn. He's got four points tonight. Yeah, good job there on that drive, using his body to create some space. Pull-up jumper on the other end for Lawrenceville won't go. That was Emory Ivers who attempted it. As Huff brings it to the other end for Carmi White County. Final 142 left to play. Well, fans at home, if you want to watch the, that Fairfield floor game we talked about, they've got YouTube as well. Fairfield does. That's... Mule Nation, you can look that up to watch the remainder of that game as Dylan Weinerberger misses the layup for the Bulldogs. Corner three on the way, no good, but there's an offensive putback. Ivers, second attempt up and good. And that was Noah Wilson who put that one in for Lawrenceville. 71 to 34. Millhorn picks up his dribble off to Weinerberger. Left side it goes to Marvin. Marvin. Now it's Sauls, near side Huff. He'll drive in, Huff picks up his dribble and he does draw a foul as the final 53 seconds will tick off the clock. Carmine will fall to 22 and seven on the season. They will travel to Fairfield on Friday. And again, as the corner three by Huff off the mark, that Fairfield floor game will dictate what Friday's game exactly means. It could either be winner takes the Black Diamond Conference as a whole, or if Carmine wins, it would set up a two-way tie in the conference championship. Lawrenceville will run out the clock with an emphatic senior night victory. 71 to 34, the final score. Carmine was in it for about the first 10 minutes and then in the second quarter, the Avalanche started and never stopped. It's a tough one to recover from. It really, I mean, again, it, it doesn't hurt you at all in terms of record, in terms of seeding. This game virtually meant nothing, but you, you got to think, if you're Carmi, it only leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah, it does. I mean, Carmi played with them the entire first quarter, early part of that second quarter, and then Lawrenceville just took off. It was like they were keeping pace with us. And then they said, all right, we're going to see you guys later. And then they sprinted on ahead, and we got caught in quicksand. Final score, Lawrenceville wins it 71-34. to Bulldogs fall to 22-7. Indians improve to 25-3. and We'll step aside for a three-minute break. Come back with the Roark Transport postgame show on 97.3 WRUL. What a hit. Now that's a playmaker. With Hucks Bucks Big Rewards, you can be a playmaker too. Hi folks, I'm Chris Myers. And I'm Cole Carter. Download the Hucks Bucks Big Rewards app now and save with great coupons on gas, snacks, and more. And make sure to fuel up at the Bulldog Spirit Pump at Hucks. A portion of your fill-up goes to support Carmi White County Unit 5 schools. And that makes you a playmaker in the community. Hucks Market, headquartered in Carmi. The alarm sounds, coffee brews, and the porch light guides your steps toward another busy day. Just like you, Invenergy Solar is up with the sun. Invenergy's Boomtown Solar Project will create up to 400 construction jobs and create enough electricity to power 40,000 American homes. Invenergy expects to invest $60 million over the project's lifetime, helping illuminate the future of all in White County. Private investment developed on private property with public benefits. Invenergy. Thank you. 
Hello folks, that ain't country, but this is Skylar Harrelson from Jansen Auto and Carmine. It's been my pleasure to help my friends and neighbors get into the cars or trucks of their dreams for the last couple of years. Here at Jansen Auto, we're bringing you great vehicles at better than expected prices. There's really no reason to shop anywhere else. If we don't have it, we'll get it. All new vehicles are priced at huge discounts. Your hometown dealer, Jansen Auto Group in Carmine. Stop by and see why. The Carmi Kiwanis Club is working hard to make a difference in the community, and it all starts with serving the children of the world. From fundraising efforts with proceeds going directly back into the community to working hand-in-hand -hand with the Key Club, schools, Arrows program, and much more. At the Carmi Kiwanis Club, we build, and we love to welcome you. We meet every Thursday at noon in the Y County Farm Bureau basement. Come visit us for lunch, a great program, and learn more about how Carmi Kiwanis helps move our region forward. Hey Bulldog fans, it's Amanda Nelson with First Bank. We're excited to be your three for three sponsor again this season. For every three point shot made at a varsity boys and girls basketball game, we'll donate $3 to Carmi White County School. And be sure to stop by and get your First Bank Bulldog debit card. Every time you swipe it, we'll also make a donation to the school. Since 1893, First Bank has been committed to making great things happen for Carmi businesses, farmers, and families. Let's go Bulldogs. Where great things happen, First Bank is there. Housing Lender, member FDIC. Evil Eye Creative Studio in Carmi is a full-service communications and design consultancy. Located in the heart of Southern Illinois, we have a strong focus on small businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. From t-shirts to business cards to large format banners, we are excited to make your design project a reality. We also specialize in video and audio production. Reach out to us to see how we can create something amazing together all within your budget. Evil Eye Creative Studio, what can we create with you? Final score, Bulldogs fall to Lawrenceville tonight, 71-34. to Postgame show is brought to you by Roark Transport, hauling fuel, rock, grain, and more to help our community grow. Call 265-3665 for more. As head coach Kevin Wolf makes his way up here, we'll run through the individual stat line for the Bulldogs. They were led by Mitchell Edwards, who had 16 points, 11 points for Landon Driscoll, and four from Eric Milhorn, two points from Cade Stockton for Lawrenceville. They were led by Bryant Jenkins. He had 24 points, 18 from Landon Sanders, 16 from Xander Cessna, five from Parker Hardeman, two from Noah Wilson, and six from Maddox Pargin. Being joined by head coach Kevin Wolf. And, you know, coach, you knew coming to this ball game how good of a ball team that was, and, and, and they, they showed every single second how good they really are. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, that's wasn't a great effort by us either. Um, but they are good. They, they I mean, that's what I was trying to just, you know, talk to the guys in there about their team. They don't have any weaknesses, you know. Uh, they can all dribble. They can all pass. They can all score. Sorry, I had to catch my breath. It's, Got a it's mile a, walk, a up, walk here. up here. Yeah. Let me sit down and have a glass of water. But, uh, no, this is a good team. I just don't like the effort. We, we've done this before. I just had a text message on my way up here that, you know, they just said somebody told me, you're going to have to find a time to play these guys on a Saturday. You know, not on their senior night, not on a Tuesday when we're driving up here. It's just a – you, know, you don't want to make excuses, but we've never really had a great effort up here. And, you know, you know, last year, and there's been times they've came to our place and not had the, the best effort. And um, you don't want to make excuses, but they're not 40 points better than us. But we've seen it with this group before, our guys, that, you know, when things don't go our way, it's it's tough to get them back motivated. And you're just looking up at the clock. Hopefully the dang game gets over with. But, uh, but no, credit to them. Uh, they got a really good squad. Their JV team was undefeated. They're just kind of in a roll right now. You can see it from their crowd. Uh, this is a community, you know, that won – you know, four state championships in like a 12, 12 year span back in the 70s and 80s. So there's a lot of pride in this community, and you can see it kind of back building. You know, they won the regional last year. Um, like I said, undefeated JV team. They're 25 and three now at the varsity level. Um, just really good. You know, we, we have some, we've talked about our weaknesses. Teams that pressure us like that are going to give us fits. And we were hoping they weren't going to pressure us, um, but they did. But um, we, we just have a few, you know, areas that, um, you know, they, they exposed us a little bit. But, uh, but you know, this is what it is. But, but we got to be, be ready to go now. We got a big one on Friday night. Well, and defensively, I don't want to focus much on this game because you got a lot to still play yeah. for. But d defensively, you could tell they put you guys in a tough spot. 
you really couldn't get the ball inside and really no. had to settle for a lot of outside yeah, shots. Yeah, their zone, I mean, is good. And, you know, we need Mitch around the bucket, but then we also need him, his shooting outside. Uh, you know, we could get it to the short corner, but then our, our size down there just isn't isn't really big. And then they were just pressuring our guards, and they were getting tips, and they were getting runouts. I mean, their they're foot speed player for player is better than us. You know, any, any type of shuttle run, you know, any type of fitness test that you do, short shuttle stuff, um, they're, they're way quicker than we are. we got some guys who can shoot it, but they've got some guys who can shoot it. They've got some athletes. They've got some ball handlers. They've got some quickness got some guys that come in off the bench so so they're a good team um, I knew it was going to be tough coming up here to begin with um, I do not think that they're 40 points better than us uh, but that's what the scoreboard said tonight me and Travis said before the game that it was going to be key for you guys to kind of not fall under their style of play they want to yeah. get up and down and you really saw tonight I mean we haven't seen a zone team that can rebound and automatically just have, yeah. just have numbers on the floor. Well, I mean, that, that goes just, to the athleticism yeah. that they are and the, their ability to pass. You know, all five can get a rebound and get their eye up and hit a guy in stride for a layup. Um, but you know, our defense wasn't good. We gave up 47 points in the first half. I mean, even against Benton, a team that put it to us early in the year, we still only gave up like 50 points. It was like 48 with their starters in there. Now, we had a hard time scoring, um, but we guarded them better. We just we, they let, we let them get out in transition. And I told the guys, we were going to have to hit some threes to stay in this game. That's just the nature. That just is what it is. With our team and our style of play, we were going to have to hit threes to stay in the game. But we started missing them, then long rebounds turn into runouts. And that's when we started missing them, and then they got their runouts, then we got our heads down a little bit, then we quit guarding, and then they got the mojo, and then the kids were, then they were going, and then it just snowballed on us, and, and we couldn't get out of here fast enough. Well, the good news is, if you see them again, it won't be till super sectional. Yeah. This game doesn't affect your conference, no. regional. You can put it behind you, but you got a big one on Friday. Sure do. There's a big game going on right now in Florida that's going to mean a lot for that game, but uh, you guys can can put this one behind you and still have a lot to play yeah, for. Yeah, like I told you last week, going up to the Mule Barn on Friday night, a team we've played for forever, um, you know, going against, you know, um, Coach McGravy and his team who have got us twice, you know, two really good games. Um, you know, that that's what we're ready for. Maybe the guys are kind of looking at that. I, I don't know. You know, that's just this time of year, and I say it all the time, you know, you, you play in these big tournament games, you play in these big conference games, and then, you know, with the schedule being what it was, you got to go find some out-of-conference games. And a lot of times they just don't have the type of mojo and juice um, that just the other games do. And you want to say that every game's the same and blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows that's not true. You know, whenever you're playing against your best buddy in one-on-one, -on -one, whenever you're at Northcott's house going against him, that's a big game whenever you guys were little, right? Whenever you're at your house going against the kids across the street that you just met, you're going to have the same type of intensity? Probably not. You know, so these rivalry games are big, and guys know that. Our fans know that. Um, so, yeah, that's what Friday night's going to be all about. And like I said, we got to get this game out of here, um, wash it down the toilet. We've had a couple of these before, but we're not the first team that's had a, had a bad game like this. Uh, so everything's on the table for Friday night up at Fairfield. Well, third time around with the Mules. How do you guys get the win this time? Yeah, we just got to play good. We got to guard. I just told the guys, I mean, they, they run a lot of sets. If we can guard their sets um, and kill their sets, so to speak, that's a coaching term. If if they're running, let's say that they're, they're Patriot play, and we can kill that play where they don't score, that's a win for us. So if we can kill a lot of their sets, I think we'll be in good shape. We have to rebound well. Um, they, they got a little more size than us. Um, going to have to rebound. We're going to have to knock down some shots to take care of the basketball. And then situationally, we're, we're going to have to do some things late in games by making free throws, taking care of the basketball, not turning it over for layups. Um, but it's going to be a really good game and that, that's just what I'm excited about uh, in the first quarter here I thought we were going to be in a really good game and it got away from us but we're going to be in a good game it's going to be a good one uh, we just got to be locked in for 32 minutes um, and if we do that I think we'll, we'll have a chance to win it all right thanks your time coach thank you guys appreciate it that's Kevin Wolf as Carmi falls to Lawrenceville 71 34 Travis I'll have a go through team stats real quick uh, Carmi shot 8 of 21 for 38 percent from two 5 of 24 for 21% from 3, and 3 of 6 for 50% from the line. Lawrenceville shot 24 of 32 from 2 for 75%, only 6 of 19 for 32% from 3, 5 of 6 for 83% from the line. Karma had 6 offensive, 16 defensive rebounds with 13 turnovers. Lawrenceville had 5 offensive, 26 defensive rebounds with just 8 turnovers. And now you worked hard on that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the stats and the score from tonight's game. We're going to rip it in half. Put this game in the rear view for the Bulldogs. There's a big one coming up on Friday uh, against the Mules. But, you know, Travis, that's what Carmine's got to do. they got to put this game behind them because you got a regular season game left that could mean you can get a trophy in your trophy case. Then you start regionals next Monday. There's no time to, to, yeah. to put your head out about this yeah, ball there's game. there's no time to think about it. I mean, you got to put this one behind you. You're losing 37 points. You take the pauses where they were, and they were few and far between. But new game on Friday. Probably going to have, gonna have practice tomorrow and Thursday. And then get ready for a big game Friday. The player of the game is brought to you by First Mid Bank and Trust in Carmine. Need a partner you can bank on. 
kind of the great folks at First Mid Bank and Trust. You know, tip your cap to the two seniors for Lawrenceville, Landon Sanders and uh, Bryant Jenkins. Two guys have scored over 1,000 points. Jenkins surpassed the 1,500-point mark tonight. Sanders over 1,000. This, this is just a great ball club. And, and again, Carmine's not going to see them at the end of the, for the rest of the season unless it's in Carbondale at the Super Sectional. And, and, you know, this is a good basketball team. They, they are indeed. I mean, one through five, they are one of the quickest, and they are the best rebounding team out of that zone that I have ever seen or ever even watched film on. It's just it's crazy how they could just get it and go. And it, it it's one of those teams where it's like that's once in every 10, 15 years for some places. Lawrenceville just happens to have, you know, better luck than most people and have that every couple of years, it seems like. Taking one final look at the Carmine Lumber Regional Scoreboard. Couple of finals from around the area. Crab Orchard defeats Compton 89 to 69. Edwards County over El Dorado 77 to 35. Excuse me, Goreville over Johnson City 65 to 48. Do have a score update on that Fairfield Flora game. It is uh, Fair Flora leading Fairfield 34 to 23 in the third quarter. So Flora leads the Mules by 11 in the third quarter. If Flora hangs on to win that game, that would mean Friday's game in Fairfield is winner take all. No tie, winner take all in the Black Emmett Conference Championship, and that's what else could you ask for? Yeah. It's going to be a great atmosphere, great ball game on their senior night. Uh, hard to be a team three times in one season, and, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a lot, going to be a lot of emotion, a lot of high-pressure situation on Friday. It's going to be a packed house. It's going to be a great atmosphere, and it should be a great game. Well, me and Travis will be in Fairfield on Thursday as the Lady Bulldogs playing for a regional championship. They will take on Robinson. A thrilling victory last night uh, in the semifinal, so it should be a, a fantastic ball game on Thursday. We'll make two trips to the Meal Barn later on this week. Why not? So best of luck to Clinton Wolf and the Lady Bulldogs on Thursday. We'll have that one for you on WRUL and the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. we got a long drive home. Let's hit the road. Big thanks to J.C. Tinsley back at the WRUL studio for Haley Winkleman running laptop and camera tonight for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. For Travis Black, I'm Cole Carter. Thanks for watching and listening to Bulldog Basketball.